Hello everyone, welcome to Tian's Quest. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to follow my proactive cancer prevention journey and be empowered by credible information along the way. Also, make sure you check out my intro video, which will help you better understand the journey I am sharing with you. Today, I'm going to share with you some quite an easy experience that I had last week. But before I tell you what happened, we need to go back six weeks ago when I received a direct-to-consumer genetic testing kit called 23andMe. I heard a lot of good things about this company and purchased their health and ancestry set, which offers genetic information on both health and ancestry. The sample collection was very simple and quick. I collect my saliva in the tube and mail the sample back to the lab for testing. And the result came back last week. There were over a hundred reports on health alone, including health predisposition, wellness, traits, and etc. What I was mostly interested in was the report on BRCA1 and BRCA2 uh, mutation. What puzzled me was indeed the results. Why did I get a negative from 23andMe? Well, a positive in BRCA1 from the test that I did in the hospital. Which one is true? I had so much thought in my mind and I really panicked. Because if indeed I am BRCA1 negative, then I don't necessarily have elevated genetic risk for ovarian cancer. Then I shouldn't have done the surgery to remove six organs which I mentioned in my first two videos. After panicking, I calm myself down and start to read the description and disclaimers uh, from this kit very carefully. It states that this test only covers three specific genetic variants in BRCA1 and BRCA2, and these three variants are commonly found in people of Ashkenazi Jewish descent. It explicitly states that this test does not include the majority of BRCA1 and BRCA2 variants that are commonly found in people of other ethnicities. It also says that more than a thousand BRCA1 and BRCA2 variants have been known to increase cancer risk, so you can still have a variant that are not included in this kit. After reading this description, I suspected that the BRCA1 variant that I have was not tested in this kit. To be 100% sure, I spoke with my genetic counselor who confirmed that indeed the BRCA1 variant I have is not um, tested by the 23andMe kit. The reason why 23andMe could not provide a comprehensive report as the one I did in the hospital is, to put it in a very simple way, 23andMe only spot check my BRCA1 gene. While the test in the hospital I did was diagnostic, it actually sequenced every single code in my BRCA1 gene. The point I'm trying to make with my experience is, yes, you are free to choose this or any other direct-to-consumer genetic testing kit, but you need to be mindful of their limitations. Although these kids do make it very clear within their disclaimer, the test do not diagnose cancer or any health condition. Therefore, the results are not meant to be used to make any health conditions. Most consumers do not have enough genetic background to be able to correctly interpret the results. I can help wondering if I started my journey by using this 23andMe test and saw my negative results. That would make me think, well, um, I don't have elevated genetic risk for ovarian cancer or breast cancer, then I may not take further actions to reduce my cancer risk. I may find my cancer several years down the road when it's too late to treat. So regardless of your decision to use any direct-to-consumer genetic testing kit, my recommendation is to seek out genetic counseling and conduct a comprehensive genetic testing if you are very serious about getting accurate information to help you make a health decision. If you want to know more about direct-to-consumer genetic testing, I highly recommend a podcast 
called Genetic Testing and Social Media. I will provide the link in the comment below. In this podcast, you will hear uh, the experts, genetic counselor and research, their insights and comments on the pros and cons of direct-to-consumer genetic testing. If you want to know what's the right way to figure out whether you have elevated genetic cancer risk, make sure to check out my previous video called Know Your Genetic Cancer Risk. If you want to know more about the preventative surgery I did and why I did it, make sure to check out my first and second video. This is all I want to share with you today. Don't forget to like and share this video with your family and friends if you have learned something. And leave a comment if you have any question for me. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.